Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to tackle a question about container sizes for growing. I have two small plants here, both in the size that they were propagated and traditionally on a nursery what we will do is we will up pot them into uh, intermediate sizes and let me show you here of these sizes that I have on the bench, a one gallon and then onto a two gallon, then onto a three gallon, a five gallon, a seven gallon and so on as you approach the final size of the plant. In this rose I might be stopping at a three gallon but for a tree like this, this is a black mulberry tree, I might go on to one of the larger sizes. So the question that has been raised is couldn't I just take this small plant and put it directly into this big pot and skip all those intermediate sizes. Just grow it in this pot the whole way through and that way you would save all of the labor. The time and work that it takes to repot these plants is not a trivial matter, especially when it comes to a large nursery that's producing huge numbers of trees or shrubs into large final sizes. And you have to think of it this way, each time that you go from this size to this size and then this to this, you have to pick up that whole crop, bring it back to the potting area, repot it into new soil and then bring it back and reset it back down on the nursery. That is a lot of work. What's more, I have heard a number of growers complain that every time they handle the plant, every time you deal with this and you put it from one pot size to the other size, you risk uh, damaging it uh, just by handling. You also risk all of the transplant shock. So the idea would be that you actually slow it down uh, on its journey from a liner size all the way up to a five or ten gallon pot. You may end up slowing it down every time you repot. So that's one of the the cons there. So certainly that makes a bit of a case for why wouldn't you just put it into its final size of pot and then just grow it that way all the way through. But there are reasons why that is a concern and the first of those reasons comes down to soil. A couple weeks ago I did a tour of my soil supplier facility and Bert gave us a really good primer on potting soils. I hope you tuned in for that video. If you didn't, I'll link it up above. One of the things he mentioned was about the ability of soil to hold up over time and this is critical for the question of whether you should put a small plant into a big pot. Most potting soils, if it's based on peat, if it's based on bark mulch, it will deteriorate over time and sink down in the pot. I'm sure you've seen that where it was potted initially with one inch at the top of the pot of space and suddenly it's shrunken down so it's three or four inches from the top of the pot. That's pretty typical and what it does as it's shrinking down like that is it fills in the air filled spaces in the potting mix so the roots are starting to starve of oxygen. Uh, that can definitely happen over time, so going up by intermediate steps allows you each time that you handle the plant the chance to give it a fresh compost, a fresh, a fresh uh, potting soil that will allow the new roots to grow into uncompacted soil. So that's the advantage there. What Bert did mention in that tour is that there are some mixes, and this is partly made of sea fiber, one of the one of the ingredients he talked about, that has been heat treated and stabilized so that will hold its growing qualities over a length of years. So I guess the number one thing to consider of the potting mix when you're talking about growing a small plant into a big pot is whether your soil can handle it, whether your potting mix is engineered to hold up over a length of time and maintain its growing qualities. If not, it's not an option for you. Now even if you do settle the soil issue, there are a couple other issues I need to talk to you about. One of them is growing space. Well I've started potting my roses now and you can see that I put them tight tight together. Uh, pot tight as I would call it because I expect to fill this whole side of the greenhouse and then the other side too. I'm tight for space. Indoor growing space is at a premium. Even if you're talking about outdoor growing space, it doesn't come without a cost and you have to economize for the amount of space you have. My plants are tiny, tiny. They don't need a whole ton of growing space around them, but if you lock them into a pot size right now where that goes directly into a five or seven or 10 gallon pot, because that's what you want to finish it in, then you're locking in that amount of growing space over the time of the grow. And if you're talking about a matter of finishing this over two or three years, that's a long time to lock down a big piece of space. Whereas in the meantime, if you put them into a smaller pot like this, and then of course there is labor of moving it around and spacing it later, but you get to save on the space. So I guess the first question is, which do you have more of, time and money, or growing space, which, by the way, is also expensive. 
I have one final thought here, and that has to do with tuning in your expectations of watering, because it's going to be different in a small pot than it would be for a large pot. And the truth is, I have trained my brain to think of a small pot like this, because the roots and the leaves are in proportion to the amount of soil in the pot, that it might take something like a week in cooler weather or cloudier weather to for the plant to use up all the water in this pot, or if it gets warmer, it might happen two or three times a week. And when I take this and I put it into this pot, I'm expecting a similar duration that it takes to empty out that water because it's still relatively um, matched. The amount of plant is matched to the amount of pot. When you take something like this and you put this plant into that pot, there is no way that it is going to empty the water out of a pot this big. It's like putting it into a swimming pool. I've heard people say the expression, your plant is swimming in that pot. And that's what they mean, is it can't go through the water very quickly. And you might, you know, again, because you're managing the entire watering needs on your nursery, I guess you can train yourself to think, well, I have to do it far less frequently with larger pots. But I find that if I generally always match my Pot, plant size with the pot size, then I can always consider my watering relatively similarly across the nursery. With a patch that's done like this, small pot, small plant into big pot, you would have to rewire your brain to think of much less frequent watering until it's very well established in that pot. So it is going to take some adjustments in the way that you water if you do decide to try this method. All right, thanks so much for watching today, and I hope that answered some of your questions about the pros and cons of growing a small plant in a big pot versus up potting through the stages. If you have any questions or your own thoughts on the matter, please drop those into the comments below. I'll see what I can do to help.